talk a little bit about what this explosion in credit card debt looks like and what implications it has for families um, in, in, and New Yorkers as well. According to Demos, which is a policy think tank here in New York City, which looks a lot at questions of debt and consumer credit um, and the impact of the increase in debt on our democracy, they've done a lot of really excellent research. And they have documented that between 1989 and 2006, overall credit card debt in this country grew 315% to almost $1 trillion in, in credit card debt in this country, which is unfathomable for me. A trillion dollars is something that's hard to even imagine. Yeah. As long as we're talking in these large numbers and we think about this industry, we could also cite a, a figure which it's estimated that there are four billion billion credit card solicitations received by people in the United States every year. Wow. Four billion credit card solicitations. So we're talking about very aggressive marketing wow. as well. The average cost to families uh, for credit with credit card debt is 21% of income is going to pay for monthly debt service. Wow. That's about one in every five dollars in income is going to pay for credit card debt. And you know, Claudia, it would be really helpful if you could talk a little bit about the experience you have running NEDAP's uh, financial justice hotline mm -hmm. here in New York, because these issues that we're talking about play out particularly uh, egregiously and in dire ways for lower income people. The numbers are that um, about 46% of low income people are paying about 40% of their income mm -hmm. for debt. So almost half of low income people are paying about 40% of their income just to pay off debt. Seniors are particularly hardest hit. That's where the biggest growth in, in credit card debt has occurred. And we'll talk a little bit about the race implications in a minute. But I think it'd be very helpful for you to talk about some of the examples of people who have come to you for assistance uh, and your colleagues uh, on our hotline. Yeah, and we've been running this hotline now for uh, almost three years. And from the beginning, uh, we have found that a main reason why people are calling us is because they're having problems with credit cards. And one of the things that we see over and over is that people are paying and paying and paying, and they can't pay off their debt. And the, no matter how long it goes, they never get ahead. So for example, I have a client right now um, who's a senior and he is being pursued by several credit cards um, for some debts, but he's really, he's really paid his debts. I mean, he is a person who was paying on these credit cards for 10 years. He was paying $100 a month for 10 years and not charging during any of that time and actually paid back what he charged many times over. But somehow, his balance never went down, even though he was making these payments. So basically, interest was accruing. Each sure. payment went to pay off the accrued interest and right. never really... Never really chipped away at the underlying balance. But he was paying, you know, for 10 years. I mean, a really long time. And finally, he got to the point where he just couldn't do it anymore. He needed to pay his rent. So he had to stop. And as soon as he stopped making his payments, they were on him, you know, with the collection calls and the lawsuits, you know, trying him to get him to pay back, you know, even more of that interest. And that's not an unusual story. That is the kind of story that we hear repeated. And is this because of high interest rates, because of high fees, the combination? What's, what causes this scenario that you've seen so many times where people are paying off so much more in interest than they actually owed originally? Well, high interest rates and fees have a lot to do with it. And another, another thing um, that comes to, into play is people's desire to pay off their debts, even if they don't have a lot of money. And so people will um, pay sometimes very small amounts, thinking that they should chip away at it and one day they'll get there, because they don't like the idea of owing money uh, or being a deadbeat or uh, they want they they feel responsibility and they and they want to pay back what they what they borrowed. So, um, but but that sort of act of making really low payments or of missing payments some months and making them up other months uh, actually leads to um, just an extremely high interest rate and fee situation where every payment is just 
swallowed up by you know punitive interest in fees that are assessed. Well, so maybe you could, uh, you know, underscore that a little bit for people watching the show who might be having trouble with credit card yeah. debt, because it's sounding like what you're saying is a little bit counterintuitive that actually you're not necessarily, I mean, everyone's advised to pay off their debts if they can. Of course. If you, people can afford it to, to pay off their debts and, and figure out what's manageable for them. But you're suggesting that if people have uh, credit card debt and they're trying really hard to pay it off by sending in small amounts of money every month or maybe every other month or whenever they can, that that might not actually be in their interest? Can you just explain that a little bit, no pun yeah. on the interest? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, that, that, but that's exactly it. I mean, if you are not paying enough to make a dent, you will pay forever and death will be a release. But you know, prior to that, you're just not going to make any headway into that debt, which doesn't mean that you shouldn't pay, but it is um, important to really have a look at the whole picture. How much income do you have available to pay credit cards? What are the rates that they're charging you? And, and how much do you have to pay in order to bring that number down to zero? Oh, and then is it possible for you to pay that amount? Because it's not possible.